Welcome back to Sous Vide Everything, guys. You know, I've cooked almost every single steak there is, but there's still one that I have not done yet. And a lot of people told me, Guga, you have to try the steak. It's amazing. And today, I'm gonna show you my version of the Salisbury steak. Check it out. In order to cook a Salisbury steak, the first thing you need to do is to make one. And as my understanding, a Salisbury steak must be fancy. And if there's one thing I know how to do is make that happen. This is sirloin ground beef. It does not have a lot of fat because I want to add my own. And talking about that, this is Japanese Wagyu A5 fat. And if we want to talk about fancy, this is as fancy as it gets. The cool thing about this fat is that it melts on the touch of your hand. And to my luck, my meat dealer now sells it by itself. And buying the fat alone is just a fraction of the price. I mean, take a look at it. Sometimes you get really lucky and you get little pieces like this. The first thing we gotta do is to chop them up fine. I don't like to use my meat grinder because it would just melt. As you just saw it, it is completely frozen and you gotta work fast. Once I was done, this is what it looks like. Now, a Salisbury steak must be flavorful. And obviously, the first step is the ingredients. I started by adding 20% of fat, a little bit of breadcrumbs, fresh parsley, shallots, one whole egg, freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder, and salt. Now mix everything well and combine all the ingredients and your meat dough is ready. Now from the research I have done, Salisbury steak is a fancy hamburger. And to me, this is as fancy as it gets. But it is a steak, not a hamburger. Remember that. But in order to make it look like a steak, we gotta form it. And the one thing that was important to me is to keep it at least one and a half inches thick. Any thinner, it won't work well for sous vide. Just likely work your hands around and make a nice shape. To make sure Japanese Wagyu A5 fat really makes a difference, I'm gonna make one without it. That way we'll be able to compare and see if there's any difference between them. I added all the exact ingredients but without the Japanese Wagyu A5 fat. Mixed everything well and formed my steak and once I was done, this is what they look like. Now there's left to do is bag it up and get it ready for sous vide. To go along with our steaks, I'm also doing my world famous sous vide mashed potatoes. You can throw everything directly in the bag, but to make it easier for you to see, I'm doing it in the bowl. After adding my potato, I threw in cream cheese, butter, salt, and finished it off with milk. Now there's left to do is to seal it up and get ready for the water bath. Talking about that, I'll be cooking these mashed potatoes at 180 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Once that was done, I removed it from the bag and added it to a bowl. The wonderful thing about cooking at sous vide is that it does not dilute the flavor. You can mash them directly in the bag, but for this recipe, I gotta do it outside. And that's because I added chives. A good amount of chives. Now there's left to do is mix it well and your mashed potato is done. But now that we have our mashed potato ready, it's time to cook our steaks. I'm gonna be cooking both of them at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. And I can't wait to find out which one is best. All right, everybody, I got my beautiful steaks ready. They were all cooked at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to cook it at higher temperature because of ground beef. I feel like if you cook ground beef at medium rare temperature, like 131 degrees Fahrenheit, it's way too soft. Everything's already chopped up for you, so I don't enjoy that texture in your mouth. I like it a lot firmer because everything is soft already anyway so I cook it at 140 and that's what I recommend you do with that being said my mashed potatoes are ready to go now all there's left to do is take the steak out and make an amazing sauce and we're hungry let's take them out let's do it Oh my goodness, do I have to tell you guys that it smells fantastic, all those spices combined together inside of this amazing steak, AKA hamburger steak, or uh, don't know what else to call it besides Salisbury. <laughs> but with that being said, I still want to get a nice, wonderful sear on it. And in order to do that, I'm going to be patting it dry like we always do. Now here's the plan. I'm gonna be pan searing it. Why? Because I want to have the fond left inside of the pan so that I can make a wonderful sauce. Talking about sauce, I'm gonna be using, obviously, the juices from the bag. It doesn't get any better than that. Now the thing with these juices from the bag is that since this ground beef has a lot of fat content, there was a lot of fat in there as well. But I'm gonna still use it anyway. But I'm afraid that this is not enough to make a good amount of sauce. So I'll be complementing it with some beef broth, okay? Now the sauce is very, very simple. I'm going to be first sauteing the mushrooms, putting a nice, beautiful color on them. Then I'll be putting everything together so that it can become a nice, wonderful sauce. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. But with that being said, 
I know, it doesn't look that good right now, but watch this. This is my take on Salisbury. What do you think, Mama? Love it. It doesn't smell good. It smells good. It looks beautiful. I and know. And it's steak, mashed potatoes, and gravy. I, you can't go wrong with that, you right? Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> However, it's a very affordable steak, yeah? Yes. Because it looks kind of like a hamburger. But then let's not say that. It is a steak, everybody, okay? <laughs> I'm at how much it looks like a hamburger. I know. So, there's two different kinds. I want to know if it's worth doing an expensive version or not. Okay. This is the expensive version. This is the cheap version. Right. But what it matters is the taste, right? That's all that matters. Enough talking. Let's cut them open. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we are ready to try this. You ready, Momo? Looking good. I'm hungry. I'm starving. Uh, it looks like meatloaf, right? Doesn't yeah. it? I mean, it's ground beef in a ball. So. Exactly, made out of a steak, yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, let's go on the one on the right and then on the left. Now, since this is ground beef, I would recommend us getting a bite of the entire experience, including, you know, the mushrooms and everything. All right. You know what I mean? Because if not, it's just going to be ground beef by itself, everybody, even though it should taste amazing. Salisbury steak, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It is a nice ground beef that is very well caramelized. Mm -hmm. It has a wonderful texture because of the crust and the sauce and the mushroom you need. You need the sauce. You need the sauce. Yeah. Perfect. If not, you're just gonna be eating a basically a hamburger patty by itself. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what? It's not dry like a meatloaf usually tend to be. I cooked at 140. There's still, still a little bit of pink, as you guys probably it saw it. You know, it's a little bit red, but it's still juicy. Mm -hmm. it has a nice texture, a nice bite. It's nothing like a steak. Mm. But I'll say this: what is really making this amazing is the sauce and the mushrooms. Yeah. And the mashed potato. When you combine everything as a oh. real meal, then it's good. You yeah, haven't tried the mashed potato? No. Try the mashed potato. <laughs> mm. oh. Because then yeah. it becomes a meal. Mm. You know what I mean? If not, you're just basically eating ground beef by itself, everybody. Now, I will say this. I do not mind oh. eating this at all. The uh, mashed potato is dangerous here today. I know, right? <laughs> Damn. It has a nice flavor because of the chives. And it was not watered down because I cooked the, the mashed potato sous vide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, the flavor is nice and concentrated, everybody. That's why I much rather cook mashed potato sous vide than the traditional version. The chives really add something to the mashed potato. Yeah. And the mashed potato together with the steak. Ooh! Nice, right? Very nice. Nice. I mean, it's not... Uh, if you ask me, Google, would you rather this or a choice grade steak? Come on. You're not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing apple to oranges. The mashed potato really knocks it out of the park, guys. I agree. I think this without the sauce and without the mashed potato, it would just be whatever, you know? But I'm excited to try the second one. There's a little bit more special stuff on there, and I want to know if it's worth doing it, yeah? All right. Okay, let's go for it, my mom. I need more sauce. Mmm. Look right here. You see here? We made a little dump. Little dump. Mmm. Oh no, uh, I just wasted it. Now I'm gonna have to leave the table. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw it in the video, but there was not enough juices from the bag to make the actual gravy sauce. So I had to complement it with beef stock, like I told you guys. All right, Mama, let's go for the second one. Right. I wanna know what it tastes like, if it's better, if it's worth it, if it's different. Cheers, everybody, second one. Mm. <laughs> Completely different. Mm. Now we're talking. That is very, very different. Wow. Way more tender. Has a better mouth feel mm. when you bite into it. The first one, I tried just the steak before having a lot of sauce and mashed potato in it. Yeah. I needed the mashed, and the mashed potato and the sauce to be really able to really enjoy it. Yeah. This one, I was like, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. 
I mixed everything together and I could still taste the steak on top of all the, the mashed potato and the sauce and the gravy. I agree. So, it's so different because it's very different. The fat really adds something to it and it's more tender. And obviously it has a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say what you taste because that's what you fat, by the way. Yeah? Of course it is. <laughs> so um, it's, not, it's not a Wagyu taste. It has a different mouth feel that is very, very nice. It's a very, completely different experience, guys. Yeah, I agree, completely 100%. So I would say I just took a you know $1 steak over here because it's just ground beef or whatever you want to call it, and it went all the way up to almost as a, nice as a real steak. What if I don't have Wagyu? What if I have like bacon fat? Would that work? I think so. I think that would work. If you put any other type of fat in there, it will just make the steak more flavorful. Yeah. So anything that you can add to it would be my, even bacon, add some bacon in there. Oh, I mean, oh. bacon with burgers already We should have so. made a you know, regular one, the one with Wagyu and another one with bacon oh. fat. You should have thought about that before, Omar, you told me. <laughs> but again, you didn't know what it was. You guys try and let us know. If it's good with bacon fat, let me know I'll make it. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Now, I'm curious to find out why is it called Salisbury Steak? Oh, I have no idea. No idea, huh, I have no idea either. If you do know why, put it in the comments below. I'd love to know. I can tell you one thing. Whoever it is that made this first time and called it a steak, had a great idea. Yep.